Air moves horizontally when there is a difference in air pressure from one location to another. The change in air pressure over a distance is known as a pressure gradient. And the force that's created by these differences in air pressure is called a pressure gradient force. The pressure in an area is commonly represented by lines connecting equal points of air pressure, and these are known as isobars. The distances between isobars on a map represent different pressure gradients. When there is more space between isobars, or when they are widely spaced, there is a smaller or more gradual pressure gradient. And this leads to gentler winds. The opposite is also true. When isobars are closely packed, or the distance between them is small, there is a strong or a steep pressure gradient, and winds are typically much stronger. If differences in air pressure were the only things that caused or influenced the movement of air or wind, then all wind would move perpendicular to the isobars. However, there are a number of other factors that influence the direction of wind at the Earth's surface and in the atmosphere. The other two main factors that influence the direction of wind, other than the pressure gradient and the pressure gradient force, are friction near the Earth's surface and the Coriolis effect. Friction only influences the direction of wind when it is close to the Earth's surface, and that is typically defined as being less than 700 feet above the surface of the Earth. When wind is close to the ground, it is affected by the friction of objects and topography on the surface. But once we get over 700 feet above the surface of the Earth, friction no longer has a measurable impact on the direction of wind. The other major factor that impacts the direction of wind on the Earth is known as the Coriolis effect or the Coriolis force. This is caused by the rotation of the Earth, and more specifically, that the Earth has to rotate faster around its equator than it does at its poles. This is because points near the equator of the Earth have farther to travel in a day or a 24-hour period than points closer to the poles. This explains the differences in rotational speeds of the Earth at its equator as compared to the poles and this has an impact on the direction of winds in the north and south hemispheres. The Coriolis effect causes free-moving objects in the northern hemisphere to curve to the right, and free-moving objects in the southern hemisphere to curve to the left. The Coriolis effect or Coriolis force applies to all objects, not just wind. For example, it impacts the movement and the navigation of airplanes, rockets, and even birds. It's important to make a special note that winds below 700 feet above the Earth's surface are impacted by two additional forces other than the pressure gradient force. These winds below 700 feet are impacted by the frictional force and the Coriolis force. While winds over that 700 feet above the Earth's surface are impacted by both the pressure gradient force, caused by differences in pressures, and the Coriolis effect, caused by the rotation of the Earth. So this is a reason why there are differences in the movements of winds near the Earth's surface and higher in the Earth's atmosphere. In the Northern Hemisphere, the combination of friction and the Coriolis force make winds diverge or move apart in a clockwise direction out of high pressure centers. And these are also known as anticyclones. In the Northern Hemisphere, these same forces make surface winds converge in a counterclockwise direction at low pressure centers. And these are known as cyclones. 